Okay, so these are my MLA portfolio tips. Being someone who applied to the MLA program, which is a three-year program for someone without a design background. Uh, I'll be giving five major tips, I guess, um, with and through that show my portfolio and give my personal context of my situation, considering I am a Canadian who just graduated with her Bachelor of Commerce from McGill University. And I applied to my Master's of Landscape Architecture, which is three years for someone without a professional design background. I got rejected by University of Toronto in, in Toronto, Canada, but got accepted with a 50% scholarship to RISD's program, which is in Providence, Rhode Island, east coast of the US. So yeah, I briefly, I graduated just this May 2021. It is currently December 2021. This time last year, I applied for this program where I heard news in the end of February, beginning of March. I deferred my RISD program for a year because I can only defer it for a year and I have to make my decision in the beginning of 2022 if I'm going to make it or not. Mainly, it is my dream school. I had no idea I was going to get accepted, never, never mind a scholarship. Still, it's an American school for three years. So that's the financials. Okay, so to begin, this is the MLA portfolio. And obviously, I looking back, there are some things I could have changed now being it's a year and a year later. But considering I came from a business program, and I only have a few architecture friends, uh, this is the best I could do. And I am pretty happy with what I have. So I'm only going to focus on the portfolio. Maybe I'll give a few tips on the letter of purpose and whatever other documents are needed for the school, but only focusing on the portfolio because I know this time last year, I really needed some help like this. Um, luckily, it was fine, but maybe I can be of help here. So number one, figure out what the school and the program is asking for. This can be very basic in terms of technical. So here, are they looking for a PDF document or a slideshow? How many pages, how many spreads, how many projects? Is there a limit? The portfolio that I'm going to show you here is a 20 page PDF document that I submitted to UFT because UFT asks for an actual document. Whereas RISD asks for 10 images, almost like in a slideshow, almost like it's a PowerPoint presentation. So what I did, since I don't have, this is my first and currently only portfolio, I made this portfolio and from there I took main spreads um, main spreads and I uploaded it part of my RISD portfolio. That means I only had to make one portfolio for two applications. Although obviously there were a few tweaks here and there to make sure each application got exactly what I was trying to say. So that's the technical. In terms of contextual, figure out or understand what schools you're applying to and what they look for, which is my I believe my the reason why I didn't get into U of T, obviously my letter statement was a long poem, essentially. Uh, looking back, I would not have accepted my, me either <laughs> from U of T, but I see that it depends on if you're applying to an art school or a more practice-based approach school, which is, I think, more like Guelph in Canada or perhaps more like UBC, um, or one that's more ideological or conceptual conceptual which is more like harvard and uft if i may give a crude comparison understanding the school and the program that you're applying to is really important to figure out what skills of yourself you're going to show forth and really emphasize in your application my application i do think looking back maybe i'm biased to show my artistic or at least my that i want to create things with my hands and maybe that's what appealed RISD. Now, it did not appeal to U of T, so yeah. Uh, okay, so that's essentially what the school is looking for. Now, how are you making your portfolio? So I almost didn't inc include this part, but then I realized I had no idea what how I was going to present this portfolio initially when I began. And so I cannot imagine for anyone without a design background how they're meant to put something together. Um, 
obviously you can use different programs. This could be, I used InDesign, Adobe InDesign to put it together. I used Photoshop to fix some in images up. Illustrator to, um, let's say my sketches, these are hand drawn by pencil or ink, whatever, from my journals. And on Illustrator, I kind of combined a bunch together. It's also a good way of, instead of showing 10 different sketches, I could show only one sketch with everything put together. So the Adobe programs, that's what I used. I know for people who have not used Adobe programs before, there's no reason why you should try if you're very short, very short on time, nor believe in your ability to learn a new program enough to showcase what you're trying to say. And so you could really sketch and draw everything out, make almost like scrapbook your portfolio and scan it through. You can do stuff on Canva or similar programs online. Um, you could also make, let's say, instead of if sketch work and such is not your thing, you can definitely make models. You could definitely build things, take photos of them and scan them. But just figure out, they don't care how you make it, what programs you use. They will teach you whatever programs you need to know in the future. But as long as you can figure out a way to piece things together and put it in one, let's say, com combined online document, that's all they care for. So, yeah, I know personally for me, uh, yes, I was a business student. I still did a bunch of extracurriculars and got, I was a graphic designer as an internship. Um, all these things where I taught myself Illustrator and InDesign and Photoshop, obviously a very janky way of Googling many things, but it served me enough that I could put this thing together and feel like I was comfortable. I knew enough to create this for myself, for my own voice. I obviously didn't add or include any funky, as you can see, any funky designs or layout schemes, just because again, for simplicity, simplicity's sake, and also this is my personal style of just simple materials showing through. Okay, so that's how you're going to make your portfolio. Now, the me, the me, main thing of this video, what is your perspective? There is a reason why you're putting this together. There is a reason to your voice. There's, you need to show essentially who you are, who, what your signature is, as if someone were to open your journal. If you carried a, I carried a journal around with me for now maybe seven years. Um, it's on me every single day. My main vocation essentially is writing. And if I had to choose and do nothing at all, I would still write. So my perspective was, I wanted to create a document that I could take things from my personal journals, create a little document and give it to them. They could borrow it, read through it, figure out who I was, and from there return it back to me. So that's my perspective in terms of the layout, the form, um, the the contents that were in it what are they what are they receiving are they receiving a full story or are they receiving little snippets of things in my head whatever it might have been uh let's see what else did i say here yeah i write essentially um that was my format now in terms of the material the content which was more so explained in my letter statement was essentially my thesis my form is as a writer my thesis is I see patterns everywhere. And these are the patterns that I want to study specifically through the discipline of landscape architecture, through the discipline of, I guess, nature and the way it's built and the way we live with it, um, how it grows and evolves, how we piece things together, but also how it naturally disintegrates or falls apart, whether are doing or not. Um, and I know in my, so UFT only asks for um, statement of purpose as well as some writing samples but RISD asked for a video as well of a minute or two minutes of you speaking about why RISD and what your perspective is so in that video in particular I was explaining how let's say my name is kind of hard to tell where I come from although I'm mainly Arab roots but these Arab roots moved a lot although they all originate in Palestine um, I've never been to Palestine. I was born born in Jordan, but visiting every summer, almost like a tourist. Grew up in Abu Dhabi, which is a train station on its own. Now living and calling Montreal home because I moved here off of my own choice when I was 17, 18. All these things where I feel strange wherever I am until I notice all these little patterns of how people are no matter where they are in the world, how trees grow no matter where it is in the world. 
um, to use very, again, crude examples of people and trees, not that landscape architecture is only about people and trees. But I wanted to give a sense of that perspective in terms of patterns, uh, which, so if that's my perspective, that's kind of the poetry and the written pieces that I was getting from my journals. Um, so here's, let's say, the patterns of a simple pencil sketch patterning into a tree or a simple pattern of circles and circles being a person falling and how that relates to poems that I've written in the past. Um, here, this is three different sketches or artwork, whatever you may call it in my journal that I put together. And it's always about patterns, a single pattern weaving through into the existence that we see around. Um, in the future, obviously, this is a pattern idea that I want to explain more in a very, in a more uh, academic sense, but that's, that's for later. And this is, I should say, um, this is something that looking back, I definitely could have emphasized more in my statement, especially for a school like U of T. I could have emphasized that I want to study patterns specifically through these architects or these landscapes or these precedents. Whereas here, I kind of just showed my arts and crafts side of, I want to figure this out. Um, so whatever your perspective is, it's important that you have one. It's important that you don't, you don't make one up, but you figure something out by asking yourself, what are you trying to show? And from there realizing what's the strength? How should you present it? Are you supposed to present it in a very textbook type of manner? Or are you supposed to pres present it in a more artistic, welcome to my studio, welcome to my journal. This is what I'm thinking about. This is very personal questions that no one has the answer for. It only depends on you, the school you're applying to, and the content of what you're trying to share. Okay. Uh, and before we leave on this, also, essentially, what is your perspective? It's also, again, not just the contents, but it's also how you bind it all together. For me, I do not have any proper traditional skill in design or sketching. My own twin sister is so much greater at sketching realistic. And these things are the best things I've created. Other than that, my drawings are very crude. My sketches are very crude. These are not intentionally meant to look childish. This is how I draw. But that's not what I wanted to focus on. My creativity, my application to an art school. I didn't want to showcase and I didn't want to attempt to draw a realistic painting and have them accept, accept me. Because this is not an MFA. This is a MLA where it's your strategy, it's your thinking, it's your cohesive aspects being put together. And this is where I wanted to show my like my tactile ability, where the, this is a model that I built on this side. It's a little model this size where I put the dimensions here. And then I also created little lamps that were actually hanging and changing colors. So it's from the little aspects of the projects that I worked on all the way to, let's say, paper that I made and how I made a film of it. And this is where is this? This is right here, actually. So everything is like in my hand and how it ends up being a journal that it's a little journal that I have that I photocopied here. I just wanted to show that my perspective is, yes, there's so many thoughts in my head, so many things that I write down, so many things that I create and strategize, so many things that I take photos of and get that inspiration from the world. But at the end of the day, I also want to show you that I'm creating something. It's not just ever stuck in my head. It's never ever stuck in my heart, never just in my pages. It's all cohesive being put together that there's a form of communication and that's my perspective. That's my communication. That's my way of sharing and giving and creating. Okay. Point number four, what are you showing us? So I guess this also relates to number three, but maybe because if I wanted to make a short version of this tips video is essentially, what are you trying to say? What is your signature? I, I obviously my portfolio is very different in the sense of it's so objective because all these projects are all personal initiatives. Like this is paper I made because it was the first COVID summer and I was living on a balcony and I had time to kill. These are f photos that I took years before. I took these photos in 2018, spring break when we went to Cuba. Um, and this is, I was in high school living still back home Abu Dhabi visiting Jordan. Um, this is a school project that I decided to take as an elective and I worked on this project and it was a completely free reign of pick a plot of land anywhere in Montreal and figure it out, design something for it. This is work that I pitched to a department part of McGill. So 
everything is all very personal to me. There is no one who could have told me you should do this or do that, which I have, I had so much creative freedom, which is cool of how to pitch it, how to present it, how to explain it. But also it's super objective because if I'm piecing all these things that I made for my own reasoning and I'm putting it together to apply to a school, who knows if they're actually, if any of this has merit or not. But I guess I took the risk because again, without a professional design background, there was no way I could have presented 10 pieces of work that were properly gone through and assessed by other people before being assessed through the design school. So obviously it seems like I was at a disadvantage. Obviously it seems that anyone applying to architecture school without a design background is at a disadvantage. But I personally, I think now coming after being accepted and rejected, thinking about it is, I think we really have an opportunity to just show how we learn and how we are in a different way. I feel like if, for instance, if I went to design school, yes, I would have had maybe better Photoshop skills and made funky gradients and graphics, whatever it might've been. But I do think I would have been, um, I would have known what existed and would have only designed within what I knew existed. I don't think I would have created many of these things because I would have thought, oh, these are childish. And yes, this is childish, but in the meantime, these are all extra things I was creating alongside my degree or alongside my main occupation at the time, which is obviously not as fulfilling as these things. But what I'm trying to say is, what are you showing us? Show us your signature. Don't shy away from who you are, what you're creating. Don't try to make a project up or don't take up a new research interest of this certain type of architecture just because you feel like having that word or buzzword in your portfolio will get you accepted or not. These admission officers have seen so many applications that they can tell if something is genuine or not. They can tell if you learned a certain skill within a few weeks for this program or if you've known it for a few years. There's no point in hiding behind some project that might look good if there are plants in a bunch of different building spaces, whatever word you might use, social stability or whatever it is, they can tell what it is. So you might as well apply as how you are, who you are, what you've created. And from there, see if you're good enough for it or not. I've, at least, that's what I did. And I have a 50% success rate. So maybe it's not the best advice either. Um, okay, so that's now to just quickly go through, essentially, what are you showing us? What's the flow of your portfolio? It does not have to be chronological. Your projects don't need to be in the order that you created it. It also does not need to be categorical, as in all the photos here, all the sketches here, all the main projects here. Uh, it does not have to be strongest to weakest, nor does it have to be a sandwich. Uh, it really just figure out a constant that makes most sense to how you're putting it together, because they're looking at your portfolio as you, the applicant with all your other things in your portfolio, not your portfolio versus someone else's portfolio versus someone else. Maybe that's an MFA. Maybe that's when they categorize if you're the best painter or not. But in architecture, at least in my perspective, I think it's very different. The way I piled it, essentially, I put six main categories. The first two are mental things that happen. And this is how I've started in my whole creative journey, I guess, started with me writing poetry as a 14 year old, um, writing journal entries, which I still do, and sketching alongside these images that come in my head. From there, the second, so the second third um, of my portfolio is work that I've done for organizations, whether it's uh, for a school or for work. And then the last two is inspiration that I've received from externally back internally, which almost reruns, goes all the way back to the beginning of internal, what am I thinking, what am I doing? my creating in my hands and then witnessing outside the things that I've created, how I'm relating it and then how it comes back to me. That's how I found my flow to make most sense. In terms of amount, definitely for something like architecture, I think there should be a breadth of the things that you've done and the skills that you can showcase. Don't only focus on your sketches. Don't only focus on, let's say, ceramics that you've made. Um, even if you studied ceramics or even if you let's say even if you studied um, botany like I don't think that your portfolio should be completely all about plants um, 
showcase more of your different skills, even if you're attempting or beginning to venture off into a new direction. Again, not because you pick the direction for your portfolio, because you think you're going to create good things from the portfolio. Once you've done your portfolio, forget the new avenue that you explore. No, but incorporate different parts of your life in this thing. So they kind of have a more um, three-dimensional image of you. And yeah, because all of that will tell a story. All of that will tell a narrative of who you are, what you're creating, what point of life you're at right now, and why you're applying to this program, to the school at this moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, I already, I think I explained a lot of this before. Um, yeah, essentially. This is what I'm showing, a continuous process of what it looks like for me to create at all stages, each submerged with my own signature. So I'm not saying this is the best portfolio, but I definitely can say this is the most accurate, let's see, the most accurate portfolio that I could have created for myself to represent myself at that moment of my life, which was you know, still not too long ago. Okay, so with that, essentially, a summary. Number one, understand who you're showing this to. Understand the school, understand the program, understand what, what thing you want to research if you got into that school, under which professors you'd be studying, um, what type of opportunities that school opens up and exists for you. And these are things that you can showcase and it, it gives you more of a direction of where to take your portfolio, how to start off your portfolio to begin with. But it also does give you content to fill your letter of purpose with. Um, maybe select some of your writing samples in that regard, whatever it might be. It might also make it easier for you to decide what schools you are considering and which you don't think would be your best fit if you got in. Number two, figure out how to make your portfolio in a way that makes most sense to you. So pick a program or at the end of the day, your task is to make a portfolio. They don't care if it's on Photoshop, InDesign, Canva, if you wrote it by hand and you scans it up. None of that matters. They will teach you any program that you need to know. They don't expect any program requirements out of you. As long as you can create something that is genuine and authentic and doesn't hinder you, as long as your tools don't hinder your thoughts and the things that you're trying to present, you're good. So figure out something that makes most sense to you. Number three, know exactly what your purpose and your signature is and do not make one up if you have no reason to, because th there's no reason to pretend that this is your work or no reason to pretend that this is what you want to do if it really isn't. You're applying to a program with your name and it's, it's such a new beginning in your life and it's one that it's not like a bachelor's where it's almost expected out of everyone in society. It's you taking up a new avenue in your life because of your own personal fulfillment or wherever you want to be. So there's no point in hiding who or where you want to be or how you are. Show who you are at this moment and ask for the help that you need. There's a reason why you're applying to school, not because you know everything and you want to be accepted to do that, but because you are interested in something and you don't have the skills for it, but you can prove that you have the prereqs to get there and prereqs to get to where you want to be. Lastly, four, when you know what your purpose is exactly and your signature is exactly, present it in a way that makes most sense to how one can understand you. In my case, again, I'm a writer and well, I write. Um, and I wanted to show it in a way that if I showed my parents or if I showed my friends, if they were to ask, oh, what do you do? Can I see some of the things you've done? I would not show them a journal that's, uh, that I've just scribbled in early this morning. I would also not show them things that I've packed it up neatly and just given them that. I would show them this portfolio, which is not only my writing, not only my sketching, but also work that I've done, let's say, as a business student or work I've done um, part of the community or is things I've done as a, a person on leisure, traveling, taking photos. So I, my main thing is just figure out what you're trying to say. What, who are you presenting? You're not presenting a false image of yourself. You're not presenting a future image of yourself. You're presenting who you are right now and where you want to be and why you want to be there in particular. So, <sighs> 
I hope I could have been of help. Now, my final tip is do not say portfolio on your main page of your portfolio because they know it's your portfolio. This is something that obviously, if you do not have a design background, no one will tell you this. I'm telling you now that this might be the most important tip. So good luck. If I could be of any help at all, um, my email is maybe on my website. I don't know. Find me somewhere. Reach out to me. I would definitely love to help. Um, and I hope this doesn't come at too late of a time of year. Good luck. This is fun. This is a fun, exciting place to be.